We're video games. We'll help you! What you're looking at is an arcade game called Kaiketsu Yanchamaru, which is Japanese for the wonderful Yanchamaru. Our hero, a wonderful man of sorts, must rescue his princess girlfriend who's been kidnapped by a kabuki dancer. I'm sorry, I mean a GIANT kabuki dancer. His first clue that something is amiss seems only to be a note tied to an arrow shot at a bird. Message for you, sir! I'm not sure who sent the message. Did the princess herself get a really good shot from like seven stages away while made of stone? Or did one of her servants do it? I'm also not completely sure why shooting a bird was the best way to get the message across. They could have just fired it through his window. I mean, he had no qualms about destroying it himself seconds later, but I suppose it's probably better not to arbitrarily destroy property. I'm also unsure as to why the bird was inside the school at the time, or why the arrow also seemed to come from inside the school, but we'll chalk those up to I have no idea what's going on. I should mention the name Yanchamaru is actually a portmanteau, combining the word Yancha, which sort of means mischievous or playfully naughty, and Maru, which is just a common name. It's kind of the Spongebob of Japanese names. It's the Nihon equivalent of naming your hero Rascal Brad or Mischievous Sylvester. But when they released this game in the United States, they changed its name to Kid Nicky Radical Ninja. Kwan Su, dude! They also changed his top knot to spiky hair because he's radical! Wah! I mean, if they're already changing the sprite, why not give him some sunglasses or something? What about this character is supposed to be radical? He doesn't have a skateboard or boombox or... I don't know, what did 80s kids think was cool other than stupid hair and video games? Oh... Literally all they changed about him is his hair. There's some minor cosmetic differences in a couple of the other characters and some text is different, but that's basically it. It's still a wacky adventure through feudal era Japan. To what about feudal Japan would you apply the word radical? Whoa, scope out those totally righteous farmers struggling in the anarchic wake of battling Supercilia's warlords! In any case, Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja, is not radical. I'm not even convinced he's a kid. Or a ninja. That means not even a single word of the title is accurate. This is like making an international release of Hamlet and calling it Dr. Jank's Hip Hop Crime Fighter, changing nothing but his hat. In the US release, they also refer to the final boss as the Stone Wizard. I guess because the princess gets turned to stone, and the average 80s American child didn't know what a kabuki was. They were probably barely aware of what a Japan was. This is how Wikipedia describes it. One day in feudal Japan, Kid Nikki, the most radical of ninjas, is training at his ninja school. Suddenly, a passing bird is struck down by an arrow and lands at Nikki's feet. Attached is a note explaining that Nikki's girlfriend, Princess Margot, has been kidnapped by the evil stone wizard. With the cry of, We'll help you! Nikki bursts through the wall of his school and sets off on his quest to save Margot. I kind of love how even Wikipedia, and its own neutral POV academic style of writing, can't help but make a swipe at the game's grammar. Kid Nikki's weapon of choice is a... sword? Or... Maybe some kind of giant spinning shuriken, or a bow staff? It's really hard to tell. All I can tell you is that he spins it at furious speeds, which causes his shy guy-like enemies to go flying across the screen like a squirrel launched out of a catapult. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. I also suspect the developers may have really hated birds, because after the intro where a bird is killed entirely to deliver a message, you also have birds that just hover hang, really, completely still, and don't do anyone or bother anything so you can run up and soar them across the troposphere. Later they even have birds that actually move, but still just kind of mind their own business, and if you kill them, the game rewards you with showers of coins, like you're doing a strip tease while also being a fountain. But Kid Nicky 3 is a story for a different day. Of course, no team of angry mask fox ninjas is complete without different color-coded ranks of warriors, like the orange ones who don't run but just jump in place, or red ones who throw rings at you, or else hurl harpoons. Get over here! Isn't the whole point to giving these guys different colors so you can tell them apart? But the red ones still have two varieties. The first boss is... <clears throat> yes, this... <gasps> 
This completes me. If you try to hit dudes in Gorge's head, your weapon tings off and goes flying, so you actually have to collect it again. Aha! So it is a sword! I can check that off this list here. The Japanese version of this game calls this fine gentleman Otafuku Taro, which means Japanese things. Specifically, Otafuku is a character from Japanese folktales, although she's a woman, and Taro is a male name, so this is likely just an original character named after and possibly inspired by a legendary woman, only it's a man with worrying gigantism. The American version calls him Death Breath. It's a nice name, despite his breath not actually being deadly. So here's the deal. You can't just hit him head on with your sword because his rather bulbous head knocks it flying away from you like a squirrel from a trebuchet. What? It's a figure of speech. What you need to do is sneak around behind him and then slash him, which also knocks it flying away from you. Every single time you hit him, whether or not you do damage, it becomes a mini fetch quest. But don't you worry, this game has only begun to troll you. Aha! You have done it very well! So, after you defeat Halitosa Steve, you move on to the forest stage. Here, masked kabuki ninja foxes chuck bombs at you from the trees. Also, we have these hanging cocoon things. I mean, whatever they are, they just hang from the tree. At first. In later stages, they just hang in the air somehow. You can just run through and avoid all these enemies, but if you decide it's worth dying an inordinate number of times, you can climb up here to gain the temporary ability to destroy your foes through the power of Skip It. Hey now kids, come get around. We would just skip in the town, so skip it, skip it. I'm not saying the similarity is on purpose, but I am saying that whoever redesigned the Skip It in the 90s to look like a lustrous burger has definitely played Kid Nicky. The boss is a Jizo statue, like the heroes in Zenzunkyo no Yabu, but instead of destroying the earth itself with fireballs made of swastikas, he just dribbles a flail and hurls boomerang shuriken, or some kind of razor blade yo-yo of death. But in the grand scheme of things, is there really a difference? And on the subject, isn't all food basically just macaroni? Whoops, that's the wrong clip. How did that get... I've, I've never seen this. In the next level, we have this little fellow pushing a giant rock. He looks like a tiny dwarf with a little helmet. I should call him Rocky. Oh wait, that's terrible. Why am I doing this? Why are you making Austin Powers jokes in 2019? I don't know! There are ninjas flying on kites, but that's nothing particularly unusual for Japanese lore. Nor is this bird that turns into 20 birds, or the bird that carries a bomb in his head and just kind of drops it. Have all these weird games broken me? It's like I can't even tell what's normal anymore. Oh, hey, Scarmy Bingus. The boss is some kind of woman, or your run-of-the-mill fox spirit, who multiplies when you hit her, until she turns into a series of small green lizards with... with the hair and... What's Shrieky from Care Bears doing in this game? So the next level is in a cave with flying squirrels or sugar gliders or, I don't know, something that swoops down on you. There are also frogs who secretly breathe fire. You know how frogs breathe fire and inflate then fly away and burst in real life, which all video games are based on? Here's where the game really starts screwing with you. The glidy guys switch their patterns on you to catch you off guard. And then this frog is backwards, so you expect him to breathe fire to the right, but instead he flips upside down and breathes... Wait a minute, wait. Trio the Punch referenced this! Trio the Punch made a reference to this. With Karnov, holy cow, everything is connecting. Uh, if you've never heard of Trio the Punch, it's the strangest game ever made, and you can see my review of it up on this... Well, there's a link up here somewhere. I don't know how YouTube does it anymore. Whatever feature I use to link it will probably be completely different in six months. You also have... I don't know, ninjas? Dig Dugs? They might be the same thing as these other guys we saw before, but with a palette swap? No, the graphics are different. Also, both the Japanese and American versions call these Shy Guy Ninjas foxes somehow, but the white bubble shooting ninjas are called a masked devil in one, and in the other it's a white wall? It shoots bubbles at you. And then the boss is a giant centipede, which has bones? That's not how centipedes... 
Whatever, it's a fantasy game. They can make centipedes have bones. Sure. Just don't tell me they were made in a factory, because I'm still not over that. I mean, if this wasn't a game with flying bug men and Buddha statues watching you with moving eyes while you get attacked by monks who hurl prayer beads at you, maybe I would harp on the centipedes having bones thing a little more. But as it stands, that is a mosquito man with a spear instead of a proboscis. Or is it a bee man? Post a comment or Twitter tweet book if you think it's a bee man. I don't know what Kid Nicky did to now have a religion after him. Isn't he the good guy here? So far, all he did was get a message that the princess was kidnapped, fought his way through droves of ninja mammals, then pointlessly slaughtered a bunch of birds. Oh, maybe that was it. I mean, there were also these guys dressed like birds that just frolic through the woods spinning around that you wantonly blade a to their doom, but I don't have enough here's or there's to encapsulate that right now. The boss of this stage is a priest who kills you with screams and more monks. I'd ask what it is about Japan and characters screaming physical text at you as an attack, but in fairness, the Popeye game has our guy build a bridge out of the word help, so maybe this isn't just a Japanese thing. Who made that game again? Oh yeah, Nintendo did in Japan. So the priest turns into a statue, and then you move on to the next- No, I don't know how a super fast spinning sword turns a monk into a statue. We're past cartoon logic and are somewhere in the vicinity of Axe Cop logic. Then we have... Look, at this point, I'm not so much making fun of or making sense of this as much as I am acting as a tour guide, so... If you look to your left, we have some Fox Ninja Human Pyramids. And if you take a look over by this giant featureless wall, you might be able to catch some wall ninjas blowing deadly bubbles that are especially lethal to radical ninjas. Oh, and it looks like our good friend Kabuto Bushi is coming out to say Konnichiwa with a full suit of armor and a monk spade. Kabuto Bushi is, of course, Japanese for helmeted warrior, but it's also very similar to the words Kabuto Mushi, which is a rhinoceros beetle. And we think this is a pun, but we can't for the life of us figure out what it is. Many have died trying to understand this game's layered humor. But thank you for joining us on this journey. I'm Tom, and if you learned something today, please consider giving us a positive review on TripAdvisor and a... Uh... <coughs> Donate to my Patreon? Look, let's just get to the final boss. The huge kabuki dancer who's tied up the princess and turned her to stone. Not sure what his plan was, but I can only assume that there's some kind of spell that requires a princess made of stone to revert him back to believable proportions. After you defeat him, the final stage is you chasing him across rooftops and being obscenely good at video games before landing the killing blow. He falls sideways perspective is hard, and you have now rescued the princess, and you're the king of the guy! Did help you! Well, that's my dumb review. I imagine Yanchimaru and the princess live happily ever whatever, and then they make three more Kid Nikki games. Aww. If you think this is weird, try Kaiketsu Yanchimaru 3. Yeah, we'll definitely get to that. There's something rotten in the city. Capital of grim, dark Denmark's gotten really gritty. There's a man in a metal exoskeleton terrorizing people, turning officers to gelatin. But there's one MC who struggles, taking up rhymes against a sea of troubles. Straightforward or deep and subtle, wild whirling words have you seeing double. Who? His name is Jenks and he's competent and confident. Yeah. He's got a mic and a doctorate and rocking it. Yeah. He's very talkative, provocative, evocative of all the philosophical thoughts he's jotted in his pocket of notepads what? to use against crooks and ghost dads. Been on his primrose path and post grads with rose and crans and guild and stern and skills he's learned has. Keeping close tabs on those lads hmm. Folks think it's flow's mad Thinking makes it so And it takes its toll On his aching soul But to take control of the kingdom back He's gonna keep him thinking that Spitting rap like he's flipped his cap So they'll underestimate him While he's investigating The murder of the head of state in Copenhagen So there's no mistaking The motivation and the misdeed By which the throne of the nation's been overtaken Okay then Dr. Jenks Hip-hop crime fighter Dope on the mic Vigilante rhyme writer Is here to save the day If you came to play foul in Copenhagen You made a grave mistake Dr. Jenks, hip-hop crime fighter, dope on the mic, vigilante rhyme writer, is here to save the day. If you came to play foul in Copenhagen, you've made a great mistake. The play is the thing. 
that sayeth who slayeth the king not by arrow a blade nor a sling but the poison that seeps into his head and destroys him Jenks gathers his boys and puts on a scathing show to beats by Horatio with the diss track to Claudius that makes you go oh that's a crazy flow and when things get worse he's waxing metaphoric to his sidekick the beatbox and head of York and the more it rims his gorge he inches towards the madness he thinks he's forged but no matter what Seize all of the bad guys and be back for the next installment of the franchise. That's all for now on the subject of Dr. Jinx. Thanks. Dr. Jinx, hip hop crime fighter. Dope on the mic, vigilante rhyme writer. Is here to save the day. If you came to play foul in Copenhagen, you made a great mistake. Dr. Jinx, hip hop crime fighter. Dope on the mic, vigilante rhyme writer. Is here to save the day. If you came to play foul in Copenhagen, you made a great mistake. I swear that's the movie. I've seen it. I, maybe I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs>